okay, hi everyone. Um, this is just notes, like a PowerPoint and notes and explanation on the poem Text on Me. Um, yeah. So a testament is a wettige document wat sê wie jou aardse besittings gaan erf wanneer jy sterf. So it's just saying like it's your testament, it's your will. And it's basically just a legal document. So wettige document is legal document. That tells you who's going to like inherit your earthly possessions. So aardse besittings is earthly possessions the day that you die. So here's the poem, and it is always important, especially as like seniors doing Afrikaans first additional language, to actually read the poem for yourself, to see if you can identify the alliteracy, the alliteration, the assonancy, the assonance, the enyambament, the enjambment, the rhyme scheme, or the rhyme scheme on your own. And to be able to identify a majority of those things, you have to read it. Like you can't just assume because there are two A's close to each other that, oh yes, that has to be assonancy. Because as we know that, Especially with the vowel sounds. In Afrikaans, they all sometimes pronounce a little bit differently. Or sometimes you would have a single A and a double AA, but when you pronounce it, it's the same, like ma and mar. So even though the one has one A and the other one has two A's, they sound the same. Um, so that's really important. And it has to like make a sound pattern. So they can't be too far removed from each other that the sound pattern goes missing. I know in some poems, sometimes they have like, a lot of aces repeated, like a sounds repeated throughout the poem. And if you can hear that, if you can actively hear that, that obviously means that it is like alliterasi throughout the whole poem. So yeah, I'm just going to read this for you and then pause and see if you can identify some of these things on your own. I think it's really important to like enable yourself to be able to do that. So if it ever comes a time where you maybe like spot learn for one poem and they ask you another poem, at least you might be able to answer a few of the questions about like the layouts of the poem and stuff like that. So yeah. Uit al my berure bates wil ek aan jou bemaak die arme neerdruk op my kitaarse nek en a woordloose vers wat vast het in wit papier. A handvol duine sand om dier jou vingers te sit en a kapstok Om ons siele, de vrede soos hoedens, langs mekaar te hang. Um, I don't know if you like her, but they, they aren't, like there isn't too much alliteration and assonance and stuff in this poem. Um, but it's still important, I think, to read it out loud to yourself. Obviously not if you're like busy with your exam, don't do that. But before, like when you, like I know what I like to tell my, my grade 11 class is when I hand out the poem or when you start doing the poem is try to identify these things on your own first before I start with, like, my interpretation of the poem. So there's a little picture, it's like a will and testament. Like, you know, the thing is going to leave to people, so, you know, when I die, I'm going to leave my car to blah, blah, blah. So we're just starting with Fash Real Ian, so the first line, so I all my berurde bates. So what's important here is that, like, actively the poet, or the speaker in this poem, sorry, so, like, obviously the poet shows this as well, but... In this case, obviously, the poet and the speaker in the poem is not always the same person. Well, actually, not really ever. So it just says, Gebruik beroerde bates in plaats van roerende bates. And the reason this is important is because the two have, like, sort of very different meanings. Um, so the person actively chose to say this because beroerde goes back to something negative, where roerende probably won't. So beroerde bates... Deprived acid that has been disposed of for nil or less than its value. Deprivation of assets is where a person intentionally deprives themselves of or decrease their assets to reduce the amount they are charged for its care. So basically like the deprived assets is like people, and I think a lot of people do this though, if they bought something and they have to pay tax on it, they would want to give it away as a gift so they don't have to pay the tax for it. So like not to take care of it. I'm not an EMA so accounting teacher though, so don't don't quote me on that. And then rurende bates is movable assets, and it's an accounting term for physical objects, example, cars and stuff like that. So basically the berurde bates is something that you would give away to dispose of its value, so it has no more value. Rurende bates, movable assets, they have value. The, the value like sort of like, gets less and less as time goes on. As you know, like, as a car gets older, the value of it is less, but it will still have some value. 
So here with a berührte bates, because it's berührte bates and not rührende bates, we have an oxymoron. Do we have the word along the course? It's two like contradicting words next to each other. Berührte by the negative on, slag, fatal, pathetic, on ongenaam. So berührte indicates the negative. And if you go and look for like synonyms in Afrikaans of berur, you get like it's bad, it's fatal, it's pathetic, it's unpleasant. And then it's versus bates. Bates die die positieve aan, aan mens voordeel. So bates are acids. And so obviously an acid is usually a really good thing. And yeah, just like if you go and it indicates the positive. And if you go and like look up synonyms of bates, you get like profits and um, advantage. So yeah. So it just is like what the person is saying is like out of all my like Deprived assets, okay, so assets that basically you give away and like for nothing, like it has no more value once you've actually sort of given it away. Will act on jou bemark, so it just says I want to make this out to you, so out of all my deprived assets I want to give the following to you, so the list after line two that's going to follow is a list of assets that have no more value because it has been given away. By the person who once owned them. So, sorry. So, jou is gewees of ex liefde. It's using like a personal pronoun saying jou. So, it was someone, obviously, in this case, like I didn't even explain this in the beginning, sorry. So, it's basically about a relationship that ended. So, the jou refers to like the previous or ex, like loved one. Then we have a double bit. Now, I'm pretty sure in English you call it like a colon, right? Yes, I think so. So a double bint in Afrikaans, like um, usually after double bint, like there's a list that's going to follow the statements in English. In this case, they on that he likes and the about this on folk. So what is going to follow, okay, this double bint is the list of deprived assets, okay, that is being left to the ex loved one or the ex like person in the relationship. Also within this poem. Like, you can never assume that it is a boy or a girl unless they use specific pronouns to indicate that or names or something. So in this case, you can either put it as, like, the it's written in perspective from a guy who's writing this to a girl or a girl who's writing this to a guy or anything, actually. Like, there's no said pronouns that indicate gender explicitly. So this is the first thing. The A minor drag of my guitar snack. It basically is like the A minor, like notes, I think, yeah, on my my guitar. So A minor drag, die op bedroefde hart seer toon, een toon soort met alles grond toon op a guitar. So, like this sound, the A minor, like I'm not musical at all. Okay, this is what I Google. This is what I got. So, like, it is like a sort of sad sound. It is a very, like, monotone sound with everything on a very low tone so that could be like completely wrong what i just said like music people don't don't come at me okay so just says your i minor i <laughs> no a minor its key signature has no flats and no sharp so it is very monotone okay so it's not necessarily like the happiest the happiest sound yeah and that's just like a little picture so that was the first thing that was left to the person, okay? The deprived acid is like this note, the A minor note on the guitar. The second thing is in a wordless affair, but facet and wit papier. So a wordless verse that is caught on white paper, like that is like your trapped, not only say caught, like trapped in white paper. So, fash refers to a gedicht, okay, so a poem. Obviously, as we know, songs are also poems, so it can also refer to a song, okay? Wit papier, daar is nog niks op die papier geskryf nie, so the paper is still blank, so there's nothing that is on the paper yet. And then line 5 and 6, okay, what this means is, die fash is nog nie geskryf nie, woordlose, so it hasn't been written yet. Misschien wou die persoon het skryf, maar daar is... Now, geen punt nie, want die verhouding is erbij. So, possibly what this could mean is that the person wanted to write something, but because the relationship is over now, it's like, what's the point? Of, miskien weet die persoon nie wat om vir die ander een te sê oor die einde van hulle verhouding nie. So, maybe it's also is that 
the person doesn't know what to say to the other one about the end of their relationship. Like, it's just, like, there are no words to actually describe this. Because it is, like, such a feeling. Sometimes that's true, though. Like, not everything you feel can be put into words. It's not always that easy to actually do that. Yeah. And now the third thing that is left. A handful of sand um dirty fingers to sift. So basically a handful of dune sand to sift through your fingers. So dino sand is dune sand. Dunes are large masses of windblown sand and are most common in deserted environments like the Sahara or near beaches. Um there's a little picture. Obviously, this one is in a desert. Um so, like, maybe, like, this is obviously very open to interpretation. I didn't even put this down yet. But the Dana sun could also mean, because it says they're in desert environments, is like the relationship has been deserted. There's no relationship left, okay? And that is why it's specifically Dana sun. It didn't just say sun, okay? It didn't say strand sun or something like that. It specifically said dune sand. And then seven and eight, like, this whole idea, they have tas sentech. So tas sentech, sentech obviously is your sense. And thus is like feeling, touching something. Okay, so this is like, it says, take the sand and let it sift through your fingers. So it's something that you would feel when you actually do it. And then this could just indicate the following. So it could be like the memories that is sifting through the person's like uh, mind, you know, about the relationship. Of kan herinneringen wees wat nou deel van jylle duinsand word, met ander woorde, dit raak verloore tussen al die ander. It could also just be that, like, um, it's memories that, you know, like, sifting through, so you pick up a piece, like a piece of sand, no, <laughs> like a handful of sand, and it sifts through your fingers, and um, it could be that all these memories that were part of the relationship, because the relationship is over now, it becomes part of the rest of the sand. So it's sort of lost, okay? And obviously, like, I think you'll have memories of, like, your relationship in the future as well. But a lot of it will probably go, like, missing because you're going to go on with your life. Like, you're not always just going to dwell on this one relationship that ended. Okay, so that's just sifting the sand through your fingers. So those are the three things that was left, like, the deprived assets that was left to this person. In a kapstok om ons siele te vrede soos hoedens langs mekaar te hang. So a kapstok is basically like a coat rack. Okay. And then you will see there's like a space in between like obviously the two stanzas. But what is also important here is that it sort of breaks up the sentence. Like the sentence isn't necessarily finished. So wit spasie wat die sin opbreek is a typografiese wit. So in this case the white space that sort of breaks up the sentence. Um, is a typographische wit, okay? Because typography basically is what the poem looks like. And this is like, what does it look like? It's a white space. So it's a typographische wit. Okay? And then the onsiele te vrede, okay? Die typografische wit beklemt hun onsiele en te vrede, wat die dat hulle met hulle levens kan aangaan, sonder haat of afski of woede. So it's sort of just saying like, te vrede means like, so are so satisfied. Okay, and what this like typography so that is possibly emphasizing, so remember, but Clemton is emphasizing. Don't ever say emphasis, okay? Never. <laughs> Never. It's but Clemton. It's an important word to know. And it's not like you can't just say if they ask you a question, you know, what is the function, and you just say um to Clemton. You have to sort of say what it's trying to emphasize and why it's trying to emphasize it. So that's always important. So you're just emphasizing the the our souls and the satisfied that sort of indicates that they can go on with their life it wasn't necessarily like the worst end to a relationship um and they can go on like they don't have any grudges against each other or hate or anger um they can just go on satisfied with the rest of their life so typografische wit beklemt hun onsiele en tevrede wat dui dat hulle met hulle levens kan aangaan sonder haat afskeel woede and then obviously, so is Houdin, so that a whole little sort of part, it's a vergelijking. Um, so vergelijking is a comparison, a simile, so it's been two different things are being compared to each other. So it says, um, Om ons siele te vrede soos Houdin's langs my kaart te hang. And that's just saying like, our souls, like, we need like a coat rack for our souls to sort of like sit satisfied next to each other like hats on a coat rack. 
I don't know if what I just said makes sense, but basically it's like their souls satisfied like two hats on a coat rack that's next to each other, okay? So vergelijking, hulle herinneringe van die verhouding word met twee hoede vergelijk om die goeie daarvan te onthou. So sort of is like because the hats can be next to each other, it is sort of like don't forget the good things about the relationship. So although the relationship ended, you know, it's not... You know, it's not like the bad end to relationship. It's not a bad breakup or something like that. It's just people going sort of their separate ways. And then sila temerude. So it's basically sort of saying that like in this case, the two hats in the comparison would be the two souls. They can be like, you know, happy next to each other, living separate lives and just going on with their lives. And then that's just a little picture of two hats on a coat rack. Okay, and now the boodskap of the poem. So the message. A mens kan tevrede wees en met jou leven aangaan as a verhouding tot die einde gekom het. So it just says like you can be happy and you can go on with your life when there's like your re relationship has ended. Like that's the healthy thing to sort of do. I know it doesn't always happen, but it is the healthy way to move past something that has happened. And then die gedig is a liefdesgedig waar a verhouding beeindig is. And the end, say of her, bought this on say of her for a geliefd and all that. So the whole like sort of summary of the poem is that it's a love poem, okay? Um, where a relationship has ended and the one leaves their assets to some, like the other person in the relationship. Okay, so it's the end of a relationship. Not a bad end though. Okay. This is just once again the poem, and now like obviously this is very much like I feel like you can find your own things. I didn't find a lot of um, alliteracy in this poem. Um, so the alliteracy I found was Perude Bartis, the BB, and then the rhyme schema. You'll see it's A B C D E F G H I J K. So there's literally nothing that rhymes in this poem, and when nothing rhymes, when nothing rhymes. So if two things rhymed, I would have said something else, but nothing in this poem rhymes. So it is fry fash, okay, because nothing rhymes. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, I hope the, these notes help you a little bit. Um, I will be making more of these videos explaining some of the poems, even poems like that I've done, like we've done in class and stuff like that. I'll still add that and you can also use this as revision. Um, but yeah, tot ziens allemaal.